Hi, how's it going? I'm Bobby Watts. I'm the creator and designer of this. This is the MFD 5000, the ultimate heavy lift drone. This aircraft right here has over 150 pounds of thrust and we can fly this guy at 45 miles an hour. Um, this aircraft was specifically designed to carry the DJI Ronin 2 brushless gimbal and so far it's been incredible, absolutely incredible. So I just wanted to make a brief video showing uh, what this aircraft comes with, how it travels, how we unbox it, put it together and install the Ronin 2 aero landing gear uh, that we offer. So let's take a look. So with me right now, I've got the Ronin 2 courtesy of ACAM Aerial. So thank you guys for sending that over. Uh, this is actually their aircraft that's shipping out to them in a few days. Um, I've got uh, batteries from uh, Gen Zace Tattoo. We've got the radio controllers and we've got a nice high performance charge case from Rotocraft. So let's just get right into it. First things first, let's unbox the aircraft and put it together. Okay, we got the case open. This is custom cut foam specifically for the MFD. And up top, we've got it custom cut for the DJI uh, Ronin 2 Aero landing gear. So, come take a look. So right here, we've got the aircraft itself. Um, as you see, we've got the three GPS antennas from DJI. We're using the A3 Pro. Uh, we've got our battery connectors. And then once again, up top, this is the Aero uh, landing gear for the Ronin 2. So we'll build that in a second, but first, Let's build this guy. Let's put the aircraft together. So here we have it, the MFD 5000. This guy is really simple, super simple to operate. Um, it's a hexacopter, specifically designed for the DJI E5000 Pro motors and ESC propeller, that whole combination. Um, it's been running really great. So assembly couldn't be any easier. So it's just in the case, I took it out. So um, each of the arms simply collapses. So the first thing we do is just remove the thumb screw that's just really in there for safety, for safekeeping. And it's a quick release latch. So the thumb screw comes out. Next thing we're gonna do is just take one of the arms, fold it out, pops right into place. Couldn't be any easier. I will then put the thumb screw back in and tighten that down. Next, we're gonna remove the covers from each of the motors. So this is a special cover we use here just to ensure that the motor and the ESC and the propeller doesn't get dust and debris on them, doesn't get damaged in travel. As you can see, 28 inch propeller, really incredible folding, just makes it super easy. So we've got one motor done here and then we're just gonna do the other five motors. So we'll put all of them together. Once the aircraft's been assembled, we simply flip up each of the GPS antennas. And we're ready to go. So here I have the battery tray. This is a specially designed removable battery tray that's ultra lightweight, really strong, and it's really easy to put the batteries in and out of the aircraft. Uh, I did this because we'd be on film sets and we would always have to hot swap batteries in order to land, get back up in the air as fast as we could. So this solves that problem. So right now I've got four 6S 12,000 milliamp batteries on here, um, but I would recommend anywhere from 6S 10,000 all the way up to 6S 16,000, depending on your payload and your all up weight. Um, so to install the battery tray, it's super simple. All you do first is take the battery tray and just lay it uh, flat on the plate. And as you see here, we have custom rails. It's just a custom dovetail. And you simply just slide it in. Once you slide the battery tray all the way in, there's two knobs. All you do is just push them in, push them down, and it can't go anywhere. It's locked in place, it can't go anywhere. Now, when it's time to remove the batteries, simply pull up on the lever and rotate a quarter turn to leave them in the up position, and then the battery will just slide right out. Let's talk about the battery configuration. So once again, I'm using four 6S batteries. This aircraft operates on 50 volts, so it operates on 12S. So why the four batteries? Well, one single point of failure is never good when we're carrying payloads like this. We're carrying some delicate payloads here. So what we did was we took two of the batteries and put them in series 
and then put them in series. So these two are in series, these two are in series, giving us 50 volts and 50 volts. And then what we do is we have two of those different connections, so two in parallel. So what that means is that these two plugging into these two connectors here is enough to fly and power the aircraft. So we could have a failure of any type on one of these cells, on one of these connectors, on the solder joint, whatever it might be, we could have a failure and continue to fly. So that was really important when I designed this aircraft. So in order to power up when it's time, all we're gonna do is just plug in these two batteries to these two, they can plug into any one, it doesn't matter, and then these two batteries to these two over here. And that'll power up the aircraft and you'll be good to go and you'll be able to fly safely. Let's look at the radios now. So in the radio case, for this aircraft, we are simply using the DJI Lightbridge 2 radios. They're super easy, very intuitive. There's no buttons or knobs or anything like a traditional RC controller. So that's why I chose this. Really easy to operate. And it's sending us uh, the live HD video downlink as well. So we've got one controller for the pilot and then we've got the other controller here for the gimbal. And if you've flown a two-man Inspire or Inspire 2, it's the exact same, like literally there's no difference. So if you're familiar with the Inspire and Inspire 2, you'll find this very intuitive. I'd like to show you another redundancy and another monitoring device that we're using. So right here is the Jetty Profi box. This is a Jetty box. Um, and what this is is a completely standalone unit from the Lightbridge system and from the DJI system, where when the battery are plugged in with this we can monitor our voltage and our milliamp hours that we've consumed so for example with 12,000 milliamp hours we should be landing with 20% left at like a minimum so that means about 9600 milliamps we should be on the ground so what that means is that we can monitor the milliamps right here and when I get to maybe 8500 or so I'll know that I can come back and land in addition we're monitoring the voltage with the uh, DJ AI controller um, just as you would on an Inspire or a Mavic or a Phantom or a Spark um, you see the voltage on the app and it can return to home it can auto land all that features but I just like having this backup right here that um, I really feel comfortable with this and it's working very great uh, it's extremely accurate so I think you're gonna find this useful So now that the aircraft's assembled, let's assemble the aero landing gear on the Ronin 2 gimbal. So here I've got the stock Ronin 2 gimbal from DJI. Uh, this is an incredible gimbal. This is why I really built the MFD 5000. Um, I really wanted to fly this gimbal and it's been performing awesome in the air. So in order to attach the aero landing gear, it's really simple. First, remove the four bolts that are on the back roll motor. Next, take the carbon mounting piece and insert the four spacers and the four long bolts. Then we're gonna place the plate on the roll motor and tighten. Note, when you put this plate on, ensure that of the triangular bolt pattern, ensure that two of the bolts are down and one bolt is up with these vertical. Lastly, tighten. This plate will remain a permanent mount to your Ronin 2. You never need to take it off, and it can even fit inside the stock DJI Ronin case with this plate on. So you're just gonna leave this on for the aero landing gear. Now let's assemble the front mount. So the first thing that we're gonna do is you're gonna take off this part right here from the DJI motion block. If you bought the Ronin 2 with the Pro package, it should come with this, but it's going to be attached to a lead counterweight. So with that, all you're gonna do is remove the four bolts that this bracket has here going to that counterweight and insert those same four bolts into the sides of the uh, aero landing gear mount on the front. Once that's assembled, you're gonna have the unit just like this. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert the 15 millimeter landing gear tubes. Tighten those. Now that we have the front assembled, we can have a look at the rear. The rear is a simple 15 millimeter tube as well that will stay permanently attached to the aluminum block and the carbon fiber plate. To attach to the Ronin 2, simply take the assembly and slide it right on the Ronin 2.
Flip it upside down and tighten it. For the rear landing gear, simply remove the three screws, insert the rear landing gear, and attach. And the Ronin 2 aero landing gear has been assembled. To install the aircraft onto the Ronin 2, simply slide in the universal mount dovetail from the Ronin 2 that's already attached to the aircraft and slide it into the dovetail on the Ronin 2. Next, lock it and plug in the SDI out and plug in the CAN bus. This CAN bus plug here goes straight to the A3 and this goes to a HDMI converter on board which then goes straight into the DJI Lightbridge system. Lastly, attach the safety clip. So that's it, the MFD 5000 is ready to go. So we unboxed it, put it together, we put the aero landing gear on the Ronin 2, and now we're ready to fly. So I'm gonna do a completely separate video on that with a camera on the Ronin 2 and show you all of its features, exactly what it can do. But here I just wanted to have a nice build video and some of the features of the aircraft uh, just on the ground here. So if you have any questions at all or have uh, any curiosity, maybe this could work for some of your UAS applications or some of your film applications, just hit me up. My social websites are listed right here and you can just get in touch with me really anytime. So this is the MFD 5000. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.